It's Wednesday! Do you know what that means? It means it's Warhammer Wednesday, and today I'm going to talk to you about this beautiful thing, the Silent King. Originally my intention was to talk to you all about the lore of the Silent King a little bit, as it ties in with Sanguinius and the Blood Angels, and maybe I will in another video, but actually I kind of wanted to do a video where I talk about is it worth it to buy? the Silent King alongside all of his, his two little bits that he gets with him and talk a bit about my paint scheme and talk about my impressions of the model. So this is kind of like a is it worth it to buy video. Although your mileage may vary depending upon what your your goal is with the model and your hobby. The reason this video didn't come out last week by the way is I spent the day streaming Warhammer to play with it for the first time on Tabletop Simulator which I'm doing on the regular by the way. So if you follow me on twitch.tv forward slash Pleasant Kenobi you can uh, check me out streaming 40k on Tabletop and there will be streams and hopefully videos in the future of actual physical gameplay with my actual models which I haven't got around to doing it yet. Coronavirus getting in the way and also me just trying to establish where and what I want to do with the hobby and with content. But I am streaming perhaps one once a week over on Twitch.tv Warhammer content um, with, with patrons and things like that. So come and get involved with that. So as you can see here, the Silent King is quite the imposing model. This is my model shelf behind me where I showcase new stuff or things I'm quite happy with. And as you can see, it compares quite well in terms of size and stature to the things around it. We've got a Telamon, a Great Unclean One, and a Storm Raven here. And all of those things are kind of almost dwarfed by the size of this thing. But what is the Silent King? Well, the Silent King is the leader of the Necron forces. It is the supreme commander of the Necron forces. And it was a new model released last Saturday, or the Saturday just before actually, so it's been just over a week that it's been out, um, alongside the new Necron Codex that I have here as the leader of the army, a special detachment you can take separately to have him in, and he leads all the Necron dynasties together. The Necrons are separated into dynasties, much like the Space Marines are separated into chapters, and most factions in 40k have sub-factions. He is part of the Zarek dynasty, who are kind of the ruling dynasty, I believe, although his class is what's called a dynastic agent, which means he can play in any Necron army, regardless of your dynasty. If you are asking why I've got post-it notes in my book, it's because Battlescribe isn't updated yet, so to play Necrons I've got to do old school reading through books. This here, I'm not going to put the whole thing on screen because I don't want to like give everyone completely the rules and take away from Games Workshop selling this book. I'm sure it's available online though. This entire page is the Silent King. Usually, if I show you another HQ choice or unit, you get like a third of a page, half a page if you've got a lot of rules. The Silent King is a full entire fucking page. And if I'm honest with the way the, the, the thing is structured, his warlord trait isn't on there, what a dynastic agent is isn't on there, what the Zarek dynasty doesn't do, so his rules are more than an A4 page of the codex. He is one rule heavy bastard. The model kit itself is £95, which places it out being one of the most expensive models that Games Workshop do on the official website. For reference, Gulliman, who is the supreme commander of the Ultramarine faction, is £37.50. Or probably more comparable is Mortarian, the Supreme Commander of the Death Guard faction, uh, their demon Primarch, who is £90. Now, unfortunately I don't yet own a Mortarian, though I plan to, because I fucking love the model, um, so I can't do a size comparison. But if you want a size comparison of the model to other things, I have gone ahead and shot some B-roll here. Let me see if I can remember what that B-roll is as I uh, <laughs> have my camera hooked up for this recording and don't have the B-roll in front of me. As you can see, compared to an old box Dreadnought, he is fucking huge. Even a Redemptor is dwarfed by the size of him. Then we have Leviathan here, a Telamon. Oh, we've got a, a, a Doomstalker. Uh, well, not a Doomstalker. This is the um, Canoptic Reanimator. I don't own the uh, the Doomstalker yet. I haven't picked up one of those. But that's also smaller than him. Here's one of the new chunky Locust Destroyer model. Was not painted up yet, but again, tiny by comparison. Then the Great Unclean one is a similar base size. Well, actually similar. It's actually a larger base size, so it's wider, but it's not as tall. And then most impressively, I thought here, is that whilst the Storm Raven is evidently a bigger model in terms of real estate on the board, wingspan, height and all that sort of stuff, 
The Great Unclean One does reach the the, the, the lower parts of it. It's as tall as this airplane. It, it's, uh, it's, it's a big model, is what I'm getting at. The £95 price tag is basically the Games Workshop price, and you should be able to get it cheaper, uh, anywhere between 10 and 20% off from most local game stores. If you live in America, then you're just going to get fucked on the premium of not living in England, and I'm sorry. It is more expensive than, it's like 50% it's like more dear than most start collecting boxes, but... Oh, quite interestingly, model point-wise and what it does on the table, if you're looking for the utility in the game, it does more than mo what most start collecting boxes will do. There are some genuinely good start collecting boxes out there. There are some genuinely bad ones. I've done videos on this before. Uh, this, points-wise, is comparable to the larger ones. And in terms of like how much fucking fighting it's going to do on the board, it's actually bigger than, than most. <laughs> The Silent King is an incredibly fighty and surprisingly strong unit. It costs 450 points in game. That means it clocks in at just shy of 90, 85 points less than a Repulsor Executioner. And whilst it's not as shooty as a Repulsor Executioner, it will stay on the board for longer. I've only got to play two games with the Silent King thus far, one 2,000 point game and one 1,000 point game. And one of the things that struck me with the 1,000 point game and how uh, my opponent talked about the Silent King was that they were very quick to tell me that uh, the model won't be very good at higher point costs, like a 2,000 point army. Anyway, I informed them that in our 1,000 point game, I was like, Sure, that's cool. Good job we're playing a thousand points then. I also don't think I agree with the idea that it's not going to be very good. I don't know if it's going to dominate tournaments. I'm not really a tournament player, not yet anyway. I'm not that competitive yet. But the model is obviously quite strong. Like I said, it could be fielded in any Necron force. Um, so don't feel scared if you're playing a particular dynasty. You can paint it however the fuck you want as well. As you can see here, I've painted mine with this teal blue look that all of my Necrons have, with a bit of um, like a turquoise uh, shiny uh, silver to the stone and things like that. And um, normally, as you can see from the box art on the GW website, that's not how he's meant to be painted. And even then, arguably, even though all my Necrons have this kind of colour scheme going on, Zarek himself, the Silent King, shouldn't have that colour scheme, in, th in theory, in the lore, because Zarek is a separate dynastic agent, like the leader of the whole fucking army and everything. But you know what? I don't give a fuck. It's my model. I'll paint it how I want. But like I said, saying it's not good is just not really fair. These things, for example, are strength 12 guns. One shot each, only two shots. But if you can get to like uh, plus ones or re-rolling ones, something like the Triarch Stalker, for example, you're definitely going to hit. And strength 12 guns, flat D6, uh, flat 6, sorry, not D6, flat 6, means if you hit with both of them onto uh, your average Dreadnought, 12 wounds, they'll reduce it down to 10, you will pop a Contemptor, for example, on turn 1. In addition to that, it has 9 strength 6 shots and 3 strength 8 shots. So it's a quite a shooty model, but really where it comes down to it is when it gets into close combat. But whilst it's quite a shooty unit, the great thing about it is its close combat potential. The Silent King himself, Zarek, gets six attacks. Each of the towers get one, the, what they call Triarch Meniers, one attack each. And then each of the bodies on the base with him, his two advisors, the other parts of the Triarch, I guess, they get to attack with their scepters too. This is four attacks at strength eight, and three attacks at strength five. Fifteen attacks, who gives a fuck? But actually, the greatest thing is that it has an aura which stops enemy units from being able to fight until all of your eligible units have fought this phase. So if anything is in engagement range of Zarek, they will not fight until everything on your army is fought first, including himself. Which means that he will murder most things in close combat with the sheer weight of attacks and dice and, and the strength of the attacks themselves. Um, also being to able to fire in combat as well, because he's classed as a vehicle, by the way. So if he's tagged, next combat shooting phase, he can still shoot. And he will murder multiple units in attacking units. If you just charge him with Thunder Hammers, most of those guys might die before they kill him. Honestly, I haven't played against Zarek yet, but as Blood Angels, that terrifies me. But I know what some of you are thinking. You've heard of the stuff of playing big 450-point units means that they'll get killed very quickly in the game. The great thing about this thing is that it has like 25 wounds. Zarek's body itself has 16 and each of the floating things has 5, making it 26. Sorry, I, I misspoke initially. At 26 wounds, you probably could kill it on turn 1. It's got a 4 up in bun, so heavy gunfire doesn't... Uh, heavy AP gunfire isn't necessarily the biggest of problems. But the great thing about the whole body and the base and these, and these tower things here is that these have to die first. So each shooting attack, if it kills a Triarchal Men here, that's that one wiped out and then goes on to the next Triarchal Men here, and eventually you get to start shooting Zarek. 
I've only played with Mortarion once on Tabletop Simulator, and he got deleted on turn one. Whereas Zarek is a little bit hardier, just for more wounds, and the fact that when you're shooting him, you're not even bracketing him himself, you're just killing off the towers. So, in game, yeah, I think the Silent King is actually quite a strong unit. Maybe not competitively the, the, the top table stuff, but there's a there's a chance that he does become that. He's not only a super fighty killing machine, but he has a lot of utility as well. He interacts with the uh, the, um, the the dynastic codes that you have, the cards that you flip over every turn to to have a new ability for your army. He can swap out ones that you didn't declare at the beginning of the game into those slots to basically improve your strategic options, which is a beautiful thing for a supreme command to do because instead of just being a ball of fighty fighty nonsense which it is it is a swirling ball of death that you do not want to fight in melee combat but it also gives you like strategic options too which is what a supreme commander should do if you think of it on a thematic perspective it is the leader of the army and the faction after all and in addition to these actual like like options in terms of strategy he also increases the movement speed of all units around him he re-rolls hits in the shooting phase for core units and praetorians around him he re-rolls wounds in the fight phase for core units and tri praetorians when the six inches around him, and he can my will be done twice, giving plus one to the shooting of two different core or triarch praetorium units. It's actually insane the amount of stuff you get for the 450 points. Of course, you are putting all eggs in one basket, and if the opposing team does kill him early on, turn one or turn two, you do lose a large chunk of your army. But if they ignore him, he's also a fucking monster. So he's an expensive model. Honestly, he really is from a, from a value perspective in game for the points you pay for him and also for the physical cost of the model. But coming from a magic perspective, paying uh, 95 or less if you get it from a local game store for one card isn't unheard of in the competitive formats there. And the other thing that I said at the beginning of the video, your, your mileage may vary with the Silent King, is that don't forget he is more than just a chess piece. This is a showcase model, a centerpiece model. It is a modeling project and a painting project. Although I have to say, if I'm honest, the modeling part of it was fucking atrocious. First of all, he wobbles. I don't know if you can see that on camera. As in these things here, they, they seem sturdy, but they won't snap. But the whole thing just shakes around. Even these two supporting bits here, I'm gonna have to try and glue them into the, the basing material. It's, it's not great in terms of support. Um, there is also fiddly elements. It wouldn't be a Necron model if it wasn't fiddly to put together. They're so easy to paint, but a pain in the ass to fucking glue. Each of the arms on all three of the central models, the Triarch dudes, all a pain in the ass to get in. Um, they've got pipes in the back to connect the things behind them, how to clip those shorter. Uh, the, this thing's actually wonky, because I just could not get it to not be wonky. There's a gap that you can't see thanks to his floating cape there, thank god. And also, this is less the complication of the model and more me just being a klutz. It took me five attempts, including two actual snap-offs once dried, to get these fucking tentacles on these posts here to fit. But I think that's more me not looking at the instructions close enough than the model being difficult to assemble. But the rest of it? Yeah. It was a pain to put together, I won't lie. I've, I've said before that Luminor Zeras, as much as a cool model that it is, was a pain in the ass to put together as well. But when it came to painting him, I loved it. It was a really fun painting project. I really enjoy painting Necrons. It's relatively simple. I love doing the shading of blues with contrast paints and then dry brushing over them to create like the energy like swells on units and the, the lighting shades hitting. I loved undercoating the silvers and then contrast painting it on and doing like little bits of highlight and again silver the highlights edge highlights and then dry brushing blue to create gl blue glow i'm so happy with how the model came out and i had a lot of fun literal fun painting it so what you got to remember is when you're picking up an expensive model or any model for that matter you're not just picking up a chess piece to play on the board during a game of warhammer you're also picking up a, a something to spend some time uh, building and painting and whilst i hate building with a passion as part of the hobbit uh, the hobbit the hobby it's not my favorite part the Painting is one of my favorite parts. It's up there with the actual playing of the game. So, for a £90 model, I, I can't complain. It is huge. It's a fantastic showpiece. The model quality itself, like the intricacy of the actual sculpting and like and then how the thing fits together. Granted, it's a pain in the ass, but it is still a work of engineering genius that these things are printed onto sprues and compacted into a box for you to take home, cut up, and glue together. Um, I fucking love the model. The model is gorgeous. I'm going to pick it up one more time. The model is gorgeous. So, if you're looking for a centerpiece for your army, if you're looking for something that looks distinctly Necron, if you're looking for something in the lore and the canon that's also really fucking cool because he's such a badass, and something on the table that when you play it, your opponent does have to, like, swallow hard and think, fuck, I'm going to have to kill that, or ignore it and let it kill me, 
I think it's the complete package, honestly. So, uh, my assessment, after rambling about its rules and, and how I, I felt putting the thing together and gluing and painting it, is that, yeah, fuck yeah, I think it's definitely worth picking up. If you're looking for other things out of the Necron Codex for similar point costs or even less in real world costs, all of the Catan are now fucking absurd, it seems. Especially the Light Nightbringer, probably better than the new Void Dragon that's coming out this weekend. I'll be picking up the Void Dragon and I'm thinking of... Um, Kit bashing together a Deceiver and a Nightbringer because I don't really like the old models that much. Or if I can get them cheap on eBay, I'll get them cheap on eBay. But if you're looking for a 350 to 450 point model that, like, you know, kicks the shit out of your opponent and is hard to kill and does loads of fighting, the Catan are definitely a place to go. The difference with the Catan is that they're not as good showcase models, although the Void Dragon, as you can see here, looks fucking amazing. But the other ones aren't as good showcase models or centerpiece models or tabletop, like, uh, center of your army models. And also, the Sonic King brings a lot of utility in the fact that it gets re-rolls and pluses to hit and pluses to move and changing your stratagems and stuff like that. So I hope you found that at least mildly useful. Uh, let me know in the comment section below if you'd like to see more of this stuff on new models once I've got them glued together, painted together, and played a few games with them. Um, I hope the size comparison was helpful. I hope my rambling about the rules was helpful. Basically, let me know. This is all like a new idea for content that I'm trying to put out. Um, yeah, I'm just basically feeling my way in the Warhammer content world as to what I want to do and what I enjoy making. So all your feedback is much, muchly appreciated. I'll be back next Wednesday with another Warhammer Wednesday. I'll be streaming some Warhammer today, actually, in just a couple of hours, actually. I need to crack on and get this fucking video out. I'll be streaming some Marines versus Tyranids. So if you're seeing this video, either I'm live now as you're watching it, so you can go check me out on Twitch.tv, or the VOD will be up on YouTube in the coming days. Um, yeah, I've got nothing else to say. You can go now.